Good morning from Toronto. My name is John Kyo and welcome to the Future of Food 10 by 10 expert series. And I'm very excited here in this interview to have Tomas Levac. Tomas is the CEO and founder of Origin Trail from Slovenia. Good morning, Tomas. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having us. Wonderful. And Tomas, the 10 minutes goes very, very quickly. So in the first 30 seconds to a minute, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and a little bit about Origin Trail? Sure. Uh, so, like you mentioned, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the founders of Origin Trail. And Origin Trail is an ecosystem that facilitates, facilitates uh, trusted data exchanges. Uh, and our data exchanges are all based on open data standards because we really promote interoperability, inclusivity. Uh, as we've seen and learned that that is the only way to uh, really have those data exchanges happen. Uh, our kind of solutions are based on 10 years of work that we've put in. Um, and are also based on some of the key partnerships that we've developed over the years, including um, standard, standard uh, data standard organizations like GS1 um, and business standard organizations like um, British Standard Institution out of the UK. Wonderful. And Tomas, in the 10 years that you've been working in this space, uh, what are the key challenges that you keep seeing coming back, uh, mm -hmm. particularly in the food industry? Yeah, so the food industry was actually one of the first industries that we started off. And I have to say that it's kind of a recurring theme of challenges that we're, we're seeing over the course of the whole 10 years, which is really revolves around the interoperability, a lot of data silos that we're seeing, a lot of vendor lock-ins, um, so despite the fact that companies might put significant efforts towards uh, digitization and digitalization, um, that they still kind of are lacking the uh, full potential of what they could do uh, with that data that they either capture or create uh, because they're being stuck in a single organization, even a single system, sometimes single department. Uh, so one of the key challenges that we see is open data, implementing open data models so that we create a better interoperability between different systems, between different um, organizations, so that we could achieve um, a more network-based optimum rather than just organization-based optimums. Another aspect of that is really how can we, or the, the required uh, thing is how to append trust um, to an integrity to those data exchanges. Uh, which is uh, something also that kind of we've been working on and, and we see as one of the key key challenges. Uh, so all in all, I, if, if I'd have to boil it down is that um, the, the key point or also our, our purpose is that if we want to achieve sustainable supply chains, sustainable food ch supply chains, we have to make sure that we can include all big and small organization um, in this new data economy that's coming up. Wonderful. And thank you for that, Tomas. I'll mine into that uh, as we go along in the discussion this morning. So. Taking that, we, you know, we know the challenges and there are many, many challenges in the food industry. What do you see as the key and maybe the immediate opportunities for food companies and the food sector broadly? Yeah, I feel that it's the, um, the challenges and the other side of the coin is basically the opportunities, right? So if, if we look at um, having all these fragmented data points across the, the network lying there, and if we start to link these things together, create one link um, repository of what's going on with a particular batch of products. Just the um, amount of optimizations um, that can be achieved with having that type of overview is, is very large. Anything from just cost saving perspective, but also value creating perspective on the other side um, in terms of uh, just have more transparency towards your customers, align better with the values, align better the accountability within your supply chain, with the responsibility that particular organizations are taking, um, as well as having just bottom line better product safety uh, and kind of better compliance, just a lot of um, e pathways that we can take since as soon as we start to connect dif uh, different systems together and as soon as we have that integrity layer appended to it, which really gives the accountability um, uh, to to the whole to the whole exchange. So I'd say that the majority of the opportunities are going to come by establishing these data exchanges and as the second step also start to monetize that data, right? So if we look at today, a lot of the food supply chains are really focused on products and it's just a product. And then we don't have the contextual data around it that would really describe more about the product which would be required by a particular buyer, either a business buyer or, or an end customer. Um, and we feel that it's, it's that data that gets um, captured, structured, shared, it needs to be appended to value as well, right? So we need to have, we need to start thinking broader about a product together with the product data and have that be a part of the monetization um, for 
any basically partner within the supply chain, even even you know really really upstream partners uh, like farmers should be able to monetize the data that they capture rather than um, a lot of times today, which is it just it just gets appropriated by some larger maybe entity that um, kind of has their uh, finger in that. Excellent, thank you, Tomas, for that. I want to go back to the challenges you mentioned. You mentioned interoperability is a key challenge, and and the mm -hmm. data. How important is data quality? And in context of the projects that you've been involved in, um, I often hear that about 80% of the effort in putting in new technology is actually fixing the data because companies haven't really aligned themselves with GS1 standards. Is that your, your perspective as well? Uh, yeah, so I, I'll say that uh, from the open source infrastructure perspective, we see this as being a cornerstone of how you're going to be changing the, uh, exchanging data in the future because we just have to come to that same denomination. Like we need, we need to be speaking about the same things in the same way. Um, and Origin Trail as a protocol has GS1 standards enshrined in itself. So this is how we, this is, this is how Origin Trail protocol talks. Um, so that's why we, we see it as a key importance. And then in terms of um, us working on, on implementations as, as a team on certain projects, I'd say that a lot of it's a very significant effort in the beginning to um, look at data quality because that's at the, at the end of the day is how you're, as, as, we are, as we can set things up, then they start to flow automatically, right? But that initial human effort <laughs> goes into really making sure that the data is there in a format that it needs to be and, and that it has the, the structure as it's prescribed by, by the globally accepted standards like, like GS1. Wonderful. Now, Tomas, on the uh, opportunities, um, obviously driving more transparency and trust in food chains is what you were talking about. It's really key. But can you talk a little bit about, because we read, I'm in, newly back on, on Twitter since uh, two weeks, I think now the, around the first of uh, the start of August. But I think there's still some confusion with regard to uh, how uh, Origin Trail uh, can work with it within ecosystems or across ecosystems. Can you talk about that, about the critical role that the protocol and the ecosystem can play to integrate multiple types of platforms. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it, it goes really, it's intended to be a, a middleware, right? So it, it functions in a way that it connects these different systems uh, together and, and it brings them on, on one, um, on, on the same playing ground, if you will. Um, and then uh, it, it also allows that you have a very precise setting as to who is able to access what which in the food industry is very critical, right? So who is able to see some, maybe even uh, potentially business sensitive data about my company, right? Who am I giving this access to? I wanna make sure that I know who was accessing for what purpose. And if there's a monetization aspect in the back of it, that I'm also getting paid for whatever data that I, I gave uh, towards, uh, towards the other side. And kind of how Origin Trail really functions in, in even in a global setting, like we can see with some of the latest use cases released even with, within the BSI and SCAN Association, which is the importers in the US. Um, it can also be about the imports of food, right? And how can we optimize and have the, the import procedures by having trusted integrity-based data where we know that there's someone accountable for that data. And as soon as we have that accountability, what we also witnessed over the years is that the data quality goes up. Um, and that data quality goes up because it, it gets um, uh, it gets motive, mold, molded towards the open data standards that exist. And once we have that, then the origin trail can do its magic. It creates the links between these different data sets and it gives the, the access to whoever it needs to be um, while having the integrity that's in, uh, ensured by the decentralized network. Wonderful. So, so essentially, uh, you, you provide the middleware, you sit on top of the GS1 standards, and any application out there, even other blockchains, can sit on top of the origin yeah, trail correct. protocol. That's, that's the intention, right? So inclusivity is one of the three key pillars of the origin trail ecosystem. So we have inclusivity, we have neutrality, and then we have usability. Because only by having all these three within the supply chain context, we can really do something. If we say that something cannot interoperate with each other, then we're already making another silo, right? Uh, and this is something that we are fighting from the get-go. So it's not an intention just to create yet, an yet another maybe large silo. It's an intention is to keep this neutral and inclusive that even competitors can have this co-petition moment where maybe they can access data from out of, out of the other system by making a valuable service for their clients in their own system and vice versa. Uh, so it's, a, it, it's more how can we connect 
what already exists, how can we optimize what already exists and, and create more value for, for the food industry and other industries globally. That's wonderful. So it sounds like you integrate blockchain and other blockchains and also blockchain to legacy. Yeah, for sure. So blockchain to legacy is, is a big hurdle. We should never seek to change uh, old legacy systems because that's going to always be too costly. We need to build on what already was created within the digitization and digitalization initiatives and then take that as a starting point to make the next step. Um, similar with blockchain ecosystems, it's, uh, it, uh, there's a lot of work that's being done and it, it does not make sense to um, just turn away from, what the, from the activities that are ongoing. We need to see how we can move what is already there today to the next step. Wonderful. And Origin Trail enables that. Wonderful. Now, Tomas, in the last 30 seconds, we went slightly over today, about a minute over, but I'm okay with that. Um, in the last 30 seconds, if you're up in front of 50 CEOs in the food industry, 50 startup mm -hmm. CEOs, what guidance would you give them? Uh, so I'd say focus uh, on the things that matter to you and that matter to your customers. If those things are aligned, then your life is going to be easier because you'll be doing the things that you're passionate about. And secondly, be prepared to work within the network of partners. And this really takes into account also to look at open uh, data models, look at open, how can you uh, create value out of sharing more data and how can you uh, create value by also accepting more data from, from the outside. So it's always a network. It, uh, the global world is not about a single organization anymore. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it all the way from Slovenia, Tomas Livak, the CEO of Origin Trail. Tomas, thank you so much for sharing 10 minutes of wisdom and experience with us. Thank you very much, John, for having me. Thank you.